Now that you understand the histogram inside of your camera, it's time to learn the histogram inside of Lightroom and compare the two and see what you can really get out of your camera. So let's start by taking those images that I had you shoot with under and over exposures, bring them into Lightroom and start sliding those sliders back and forth. Take your exposure slider and move it back and forth and see what you can recover in each of those images. Do the same with your highlight slider and then also your shadow slider. Those three sliders are going to be the most critical sliders that you use to deal with those over and under exposures when you are playing with the histogram inside of your camera. When we're looking at an image where we had to purposefully underexpose to protect our highlights and our model is in shadow, the first knob that we're going to go to is the exposure knob. We're going to grab the exposure knob which deals with mostly those mid-tones and we're going to bring it up and we're looking only at the face tones of the model, the important tones in the photograph. And we're going to get that to where we want it to be, but be careful because now that exposure knob is also working inside of the highlights a little bit and you're going to start to see some of those highlights that you were pushing against. You're going to see some of those start to blow out. Fortunately for us, we also have a slider right under the exposure knob which is called highlights. And the highlights, if you take it down, will actually recover those highlights that you just blew by pulling the exposure up. And of course, the shadows knob is going to finish the job. When we brighten up our shadows, we start to even out the tones within the important area, which is our model. Now, all of this is done looking at the most important item in the photograph, which is the model in our case. Remember, the other parts of the photograph can be controlled through burning and dodging and vignette tools and even the radial filter and those things can bring the rest of our image into control. What we really want to do is start with the perfect exposure for our main subject and we did that by using the exposure, the highlight and the shadow sliders. And when you're working with an HDR high dynamic range situation, you'll find that with that merged HDR image inside of Lightroom, you're going to want to start with the shadow slider instead of the exposure slider. And that shadow slider, even though you have an image that looks super dark, when you bring it to the right, it's going to open up amazing detail inside of those shadows. And you'll start to think that Lightroom truly is magical. Now join me at the upcoming free webinar where I'm going to take all of this information that you've been learning so far and we're going to put it together and we're going to get into the nitty gritty details in the develop module on how to make sure that your exposures that you've already taken are the best they can possibly be. We're even going to teach you how to do that as quickly as possible. In fact, I'm going to teach you how to make Lightroom do most of the work for you before you even look at your images. And yes, we will talk a little bit about presets as well. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed these lessons, please make a comment or send them to a friend or even shoot me a note because I'd love to hear from you. And if you'd like to learn more about photography, you're really interested in getting educated, go to jaredplatt.com where you can learn more about my upcoming webinars as well as in-person workshops and learn a whole lot about photography. And I'll look forward to seeing you there.